what's going on everyone, Nick Sapinero here once again from the Divi offices and this week we're going to be talking a little bit about GitHub. So GitHub has become a very popular topic of discussion in the cryptocurrency space. If you've been following crypto for any period of time, you may have heard about this, but maybe you don't quite understand it. So simply, GitHub is a place for collaborative development that a lot of developers use to work with one another. So what I want you to get out of this video is basically the fact that there are a lot of things going on on GitHub and there's a lot of things to look for when you're looking at a new project, but not all of them are the same in each project. For example, the number of commits, I see a lot of talk about that and it's really important to actually look at the commits themselves and we'll talk about that in a few. So before we get into commits and what that means for you, let's look at how a developer uses GitHub and how they actually get to the point of committing code. So the first thing that we need to look at is what is a repo? Uh, a repo or repository is exactly what it sounds like. It's where all of the code lives. So a remote repository is the remote or the code that lives on GitHub, on the website. Uh, a local repository would be the code that lives on your computer or your local machine. So another term that you might hear a lot in crypto uh, and you might see on GitHub is the term fork. Uh, fork can mean a lot of different things and there are a lot of distinctions to be made, so much so that it could probably be its own video. So for that reason, I recommend that you check out the blog in the description below uh, if you really wanna learn more about forks and sporks and things like that. But for now, we're just gonna talk about what forking means on GitHub. So when you fork someone's repository, you basically make a copy of it that you can still pull in updates from, but you can still make your own. Um, so you'll notice that a lot of cryptocurrencies are forks of another. For example, Divi is a fork of Pivx, which was a fork of Dash, which was a fork of Bitcoin. And you'll see that, of course, each one offers its own set of features and improvements over the previous iteration. So let's talk a little bit about branches. So what exactly is a branch? So when you're working with a team of developers, it's really common to make a separate branch that you can work on without entering uh, you know, code that has errors or bugs into the production ready branch, which we typically call the master branch. I like to think of each branch as a separate account that the developer can work on without stepping on everyone else's toes. So let's say I'm one of the developers on the team and my branch is ready to be pushed to our master branch or the production ready branch. I can make a commit to my branch, push that branch, and then make what is called a pull request. And we'll get into pull requests in a little bit, but first let's talk about commits. So commits are probably something that you've heard a lot about when following crypto projects. Um, and it's really important to know exactly what commits are. So what are they? Basically a commit is a change to the code base that the developer is happy with and is ready to make public. You're committing to that change, right? So the thing about commits is that it'd be really easy to go into my code base, make one little change, commit it, make another little change, then commit it, and just saturate a code base with all these commits to make it look like there's a lot of activity going on. That's why it's so important to look at the actual content of the commit, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. All right, so this is the Divi project GitHub, and I'm gonna show you the difference because you see that although it looks like there's not been many contributions um, to this GitHub, in fact, the protocol itself has been worked on quite a bit. The reason that you don't see a lot of contributions versus say my profile, which has a lot of contributions, is because the developers aren't necessarily committing from the Divi project account. Um, so if you wanted to see, for example, um, some commits in the Divi protocol, you just click the number of commits. And the, as I just said, the key is to look at the content of the commit. So here's a particularly large commit. Um, you can see that there had been almost 3,000 additions and almost 10,000 deletions. Uh, a lot of this stuff was just commented out code, but the, the key is here that you know there was 26 changed files. If you look at uh, commit history and it says, you know, updated readme 10 times, yeah, they added 10 commits to the repository, but they didn't actually do any work, right? Um, so that's, that's why it's so important that you understand how GitHub actually works rather than just 
looking at, uh, you know, looking for a big number of commits. So let's go back to pull requests really quick. A pull request is exactly what it sounds like. It's a request made by one of the developers on the team to pull or add their code from their personal branch back into the master code base, or again, the production ready code base. So I hope that this brief overview of GitHub was helpful for you. And I hope that it gives you a little bit better of an understanding about how developers collaborate with each other and what to look for when it comes to uh, looking at crypto projects. As always, it's very important that you do your own research, go with your gut, and try to make the most educated decision as humanly possible when it comes to investing in cryptocurrencies. As always, I'm Nick Sapinero, and if you like the video, please like, share, subscribe, and find us on Telegram if you have any additional questions. We're always happy to talk about crypto, GitHub, or anything else that may cross your mind. Till next time, it's been real.